Hi everyone, my name is Brittany and I am back with a tutorial. Today I'm going to be using uh, the Let's Be Mermaids um, collections from Jesse James Beads and I'm super excited because we all know I love the, the ocean themed stuff, sea themed stuff, and I love turquoise. I think the main one that we're going to be using today is Splash. However, I might get some backup from Siren and Coral Queen. So um, here is uh, the pendant I want to use today it's a little enameled shell that's just super adorable and before we decide on which other beads I'm going to be using from the, um, the pack I already have some hemp going so I have four strands what I did was I took two five yard strands now I know that sounds like a lot but with hemp if you're knotting it takes up quite a bit of room and if you want a longer necklace you need to start out with quite a bit of hemp so I had ten yards I made two um, five yard pieces and then I folded them in half and so now I have four two and a half yard pieces so I'm gonna find the ends so I have my two ends and I'm just going to slide one group of four strands through um, one side of our pendant. Now, if you're having trouble keeping your pieces together, you can twist them, you can use some wax, you can use tape, like bind them together with tape. I'm gonna see how this goes, and if it doesn't work out, we'll figure it out. Um, these have a tendency to, to unravel while you're working with them, so you might have to trim them throughout your project. Um, this is probably just about the right size so I'm gonna slip all four pieces through see if we can do it can we do it yes okay and then I'm going to bring this to the middle of our necklace or to the middle of our cords I should say and I'm gonna do that by putting both ends together and then finding the center and dragging our pendant along the way It's okay if they get um, tangled, it'll happen. <laughs> you might just need to spend some time on knotting. So now we have the pendant in the middle of our strands. Um, you have a couple options here. You can just leave it like that and then start your knotting. You can make one overhand knot, which I think I'm gonna do, or you could tie it um, kind of like a bow, like a bow knot. I don't know if that's the name of the knot that I'm thinking of. I'm not, I know how to make the knots. I don't know the names of the knots. So I'm gonna make a knot like this, okay, and we have a rogue bead, put them off to the side, and I'm going to start with a big um, opening because there are eight pieces that need to make it their way through there. So then we're going to walk the knot down to our pendant while carefully tightening. And there we go. First step is complete. So I'm gonna to switch to a bead mat so our beads aren't rolling around and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've separated out all of the beads from the mix into cute little piles. And um, I've turned my um, pendant upside down. So this is going to act as our anchor while we're knotting. Normally I would use like a binder clip or a piece of tape to hold down um, my end if I was starting at one end of the necklace so the um, hemp wouldn't move around. But since we've already got a big knot there, this can hold it down. Again, you can tape this to the table if you want. Um, I'm gonna see how well it works out. You might need to in the uh, beginning. I've separated the uh, eight strands into two sets of four. So I kind of just went with which ones were naturally on the left side and which ones were naturally on the right side. And within that, I'm gonna put, turn um, the left side, I'm gonna just put those off to the side and not think about those for a while until it's time to do the left side of the necklace. So then my right side of the necklace, I have a natural outer leg string. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with just two hands. Sometimes you need about six when you're working with hemp. Um, and then I'm going to pull that to the far right. Then we have two in the middle and we have one on the left. So I'm going to pull that to the far left. Okay. So again, we're forgetting about these four strands. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just tape those down to my table because 
it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so those are taped down to the table. So now we'll be working on the right side of the necklace. Well, actually, this is probably the left side of the necklace, but the right side looking at it this way. Um, I, ha I don't have a pattern in mind, but we want to be very uh, aware of the size of the holes in the beads that we're using. So I'm worried that these pearls, even though they're really pretty and they go really well, aren't going to fit this cord through as they are you might need a bead reamer and a bead reamer is like a file that'll go inside um, a bead and make the hole larger so i have my two middle strands here um, and most of these beads will not fit two strands through them which would be ideal for hemp unfortunately that's not what's going on today <laughs> so but we're gonna make do and we're gonna make a really pretty c theme necklace um, the the hemp reminds me of like netting or rope that you would use while boating and it's just obviously these wonderful sea spray colors so what you can do is kind of angle cut or you can use wax again you can use some tape try and angle cut my threads and see if that works if it doesn't we'll get some tape um, I love these crystals they're so sweet. I'm going to see if we can fit that through. Kind of just twist it. Mm. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to load on some beads. And I'm going to do that at the beginning just so we're not doing it throughout the necklace. And... Um, we, we don't have to knot them all in place at the same time. You want to make sure you keep your outside strands away while you're knotting and your in inside strands in the middle. So we have a crystal on this strand. Um, let's see what we can do next. I like these. I love both of these. It's like a mermaid glass that has a glow in it. And then these look like actual sea spray, these coated glass beads. I'm going to grab one of these put my hemp through so then I want to make sure that I set as I'm doing this set them aside for the other side of the necklace so each time I put one on here I'll put one of the matching and the other side I think I actually want some accents of purple in this necklace not too many because I'm really going for the C theme here but the um, siren set had some really cute purple crystals in them. So I'm going to grab that purple crystal. I'm going to grab two of those. Maybe, actually I'm going to grab all four of those. Because there is some blue in there in that crystal as well. Oh, there are a bunch of them. I think we're only going to need four. But there's now there are some left in that mix for me when I go back. Um, I don't See anything else that I want to take out of there yet but we have a ways to go <laughs> so um, another bead that I'd like to see on here is let's see if we can get a pearl on here I'm gonna have to really choose wisely with these oh it'll go in this one there we go okay And I think next I'm going to go loving this gold bead right here. But I think here I'm going to put, since it has such a large hole, I'm going to put it through uh, with both of these pieces of cord. And you'll see what we'll, we'll do once we start knotting later, you'll understand. But I want to load all the beads on first. There we go, both on one. And then, let's see, so we want to make sure that we don't get these too twisted up. Okay, so we have right and left again. I want another bead on my left side. I'm going to grab one of those crystals. 
one of the purple crystals, not one of the green or blue or whatever color that is. And then on the right side, I am going to go, what about one of these big guys? These are so pretty. They're almost like faux um, gemstone. They're so pretty. Now let's see if this will work through this hole. If not, totally fine. We can set these aside for earrings, which I think we might have to do because they're, they have a little bit smaller hole. Yeah, we're going to set those guys aside for earrings, but that's okay. Okay, so we were able to get it inside of one of these mermaid glass beads. I'm just going to keep twisting until it gets out the other side. And just grab it. If you don't have nails, tweezers work just as well. Okay, so then we want to make sure we put a pearl aside, a um, crystal. Oh, there are two different crystals from that other mix, so I'll have to grab some more of these purple ones. Um, and a mermaid bead. And then I'm thinking we need one of these large bicones on the left string. Love it. That looks like seafoam green, doesn't it? Don't worry that they're touching, that we're going to be nodding soon. And then, so I'll put one of these in there. Um, what do we think next? I think we'll work every three beads into a gold bead. So I'm thinking I like the pumpkin melon bead for this section. Okay. And then put that in our side bucket. And then um, we want to make sure that our beads, our strings stay on the correct side. So um, let's see, a left is this one, and right is that one. So now I think I want to put a crystal on the right side again. And as you go, <laughs> you're going to get fray. So you go ahead and trim as much as you need. Just be very careful because you don't want to cut off too much length. And then I'm going to put a pearl on the left side this time. And then um, I think I want to do, I'm going to put um, a gold, well, I'm going to put one more bead on the right side and then I'm going to put a gold spacer, one of these daisy spacers on. I'm just trying to decide which bead we'll put on next to this. I think we'll do another one of these sea spray gold, or glass beads kind of in the same pattern as we have there but it's just a little reversed and then I'm gonna take the pearl side and I'm going to put one of our daisy spacers right up against that pearl Again, if you don't have nails, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Just go ahead and use tweezers or something to grab that for you. And we're going to slide it down to our pearl. Get my left string out of the way there. 
Okay, so I think that's enough beads for now. If I want to add more, I will. Um, I have some an idea for these guys in just a minute, but we're not there yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my two, um, or my two middle strands stay in the middle and then I'm gonna move down the rest of my beads they're not coming off because um, we have to slide them down and there's tons of um, cord that they would have to make it down to fall off and this one's pretty tight so it's they're not going anywhere but I'm gonna move these down so it's easier for me to knot towards the front of the necklace okay so what I want to do here is I want to loosely move up my um, crystal rondelle and I am going to make I'm going to take my far left strand and I'm going to make sure my two are in the middle still okay cross over those two in the middle before our two beads okay and then I'm going to cross over or I'm gonna just cross over those beads and then I'm gonna take my far right strand and I'm gonna move it over that string. So we look like we have a four, okay? So it's coming over these two under the left or under the right side. Then I'm going to take my right side and then I'm gonna put it under my two strings and then we're gonna come out over our left side, okay? So we want to make sure those two always stay in the middle. The only ones that are moving are our right and left strands. So this way we now have a knot up against our bead and we want to pull our strands taut. Now the ideal thing is to have larger hole beads or smaller thinner cord so both of these strands make it through that bead. We don't have that luxury here because we want it to be a little rustic um, with this cord and I'm just gonna move it up, okay? I'm gonna move it up as far as it'll go against that knot and pull as tightly as I can without the, um, the bead collapsing, not collapsing, um, without the bead having any gaps, okay? So that one I went over with my left. So now the next one, I'm gonna go over my right, over the two um, middle, and then th and under the left. Okay, so we have a backwards four. And then I'm gonna come with my left one underneath all of these strands, okay? but over the right strand. So just the exact same thing we just did, but in reverse. So we have those two in the middle and we're gonna just snap that up against that bead. Okay, I'm gonna do that two more times. So I have, um, and I'm gonna go back to the original start. So we're gonna keep our two in the middle. I'm gonna create a four, uh, A four that goes over our two middle and then we come with our right one we're going to push that underneath the right string and then we're going to come back with the right string go under all three of those and then over the left hand side okay so that's what the knot looks like. And then those two strings are always in the middle. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Go over. This goes a lot faster if you're not doing it in front of a camera. <laughs> So there we go, I'll move, try and move it to the left a little bit. So then you start to see a flat pattern going. Now, what I wanna do here is I am going to, that's, that's stationary, that's not going anywhere. And then I want to take all four of my strands, 
and I just want to create a knot here. I'm not going to do um, the knots that we were just doing, but I'm just going to do like an overhand knot so these guys are moving around a little bit. It's going to be a little hard because we have our piece taped down, but I'm just going to make a loop. And then we have to remember we have all these beads on our remaining strand or remaining necklace and we just want to slowly you don't there's no no time limit here if you want the necklace to look right so we want to slowly feed all four of these strands back through our necklace to make a knot here And if you're really patient and just keep your lines from crossing, it'll come out perfectly. And it turns out to be pretty easy. So there we have a knot starting. So I want to make sure that these two are still loose. I'm just going to move my knot down to where I'd like it to be. Throughout this, you want to make sure you keep track of your middle strands, which I'm doing by seeing where the beads are on the rest of the strands. So these two are our outer ones and these two are our inner ones. And we just want to make sure that our strands here are equal. So this one's showing it's bowing a little bit towards the outside. So I want to make sure I pull on that a little bit. make sure it straightens out. I want this to move down just a little bit so I'm going to loosen it and then pull each individual strand tighter to lock the knot. So right here we have two floating beads just hanging out, giving us some interest, okay? So here, I'm gonna again figure out where our right, left, and middle are. And we wanna make sure we do that before we do any more knotting. So we have our right, we have our left, or vice versa, whichever one works best. And then we have our middles. Okay, and I'm gonna slide down the bead that's on the two middle strands. Okay, and then um, what I'm gonna do is create uh, this same knot, but around this bead in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over our middle strands with my left string, and it's going to go under our right string. Then our right string is going to go under all of these, and then over the left string on the other side. And then we're gonna do the exact opposite. I'm gonna start with going over with our right string and then bringing our left string under all of these and then out the right side over the right strand. Okay. 
and that's one complete knot. So you did the right side and then the left side. I'm gonna do that one more time for each side. And you can always tell which one you did first. So I know I went over mine going left this time because it's over front coming from the left hand side, it's over the middle. And now I'm coming over from the right hand side this time. You see it's going over and then we're coming under. And this time the left hand string is in the back. So we know that we came over with the right one first. So if you ever get lost, you could just look at the knot before it and kind of figure out which one you did last. So now since we started with the right hand side, it shows we have the, the um, knot heading in the left hand direction. So there we go, super cute. Now I have these three beads that I'm gonna move down. So we have a crystal, we have a bicone and a mermaid bead, and I'm gonna move, I'm going to tape the necklace back so we can see what we're working on. There we go, there we go. So again, you could do this in any order you like. Do you, if you like the way this looks, you like them being captured within the, the knots, that's one look, or you can have them being free. I want a, a mixture of them being free and captured within the, the knots. So I wanna make sure that I have this the right direction though. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna move these two beads down and I'm gonna recreate this knot right here where the these two are free. And then what I'll do is knot around Actually, you know what? We're gonna do all three of these free because then we have the um, the metal bead in the middle. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna take all four of my beads or all four of my strings. I'm just gonna move these up a little bit to make it a little easier for now. And I'm gonna make a knot right here like we did before. Put all of our strands through. I would say this is definitely an inter inter intermediate necklace. Um, it, you would probably want to have some um, knowledge of knotting beforehand or working with hemp, but if you want to try it, I say go for it. There, it's mistakes are always fun too. If we if we make them, we learn from them. I have never made a piece of jewelry and not learned from it. Got a little piece in our hemp there. Oh, I actually think that's actually built into the hemp. Okay, so I'm gonna move this knot towards our beads a little bit. And I wanna decide how much space I need for those beads to be free. I think, I think that's about enough. And then we wanna pull and then individually pull each strand to make that knot a little tighter. Okay, so we have these three free in there. Okay, and now I'm going to move down my, my melon bead up towards that knot as much as I can get it. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna do our overhand underhand knot. We'll come over, we'll get this guy and put him over our left string and 
and then bring the right string underneath and then out over the left string. Okay, and then we'll slide that knot up to our bead. Ooh, I love that. That looks so cute. I would love a whole necklace with just those beads. And then we'll go from the other side. So we'll take our right hand side, go over our two middle strands. Sorry, I'm making, trying to make sure we're in the camera. Go over our two middle strands, put left over right, come underneath, and then out over the right hand side. Just make sure we tighten. Now, if you wanted a spiral, you could just do one side. You don't have to do right to left, left to right. Just choose a side and keep going that way and you'll end up with a spiral, which we might do towards up the back, uh, towards the back of the necklace. So then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that one more time for both directions, just to keep um, continuity in the necklace. So, okay, so here's our necklace so far. We have it taped down, so let me free it. Um, it's looking, it, to me it looks like uh, a net that has caught some beautiful beads from the sea. So I'm gonna go ahead and scooch up the rest of these beads. We have our pearl and our spacer. And then on the other side, we have a crystal and a seafoam bead. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And then I'm going to add this bead like we did here and like we did here with these two behind um, our three beads right here. Okay, so I got the last bead on and I did a few knots just like we did um, here and here. And this is what so far the right side of, or the left side of the necklace looks like. So we've captured a bunch of really pretty beads in some hemp through several different knot techniques. And then um, I'm gonna do the exact same thing up the other side of the necklace, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do on the back, and then we'll finish it off. Okay, so I finished the identical knotting on the other side of the necklace, but before I show you that, we're gonna work on um, pieces for the back of our necklace. So um, I grabbed some jump rings out of this little findings kit from Beetleon, and I have, um, I picked out some beads. So I grabbed these two charms that were in the mix. So I'll bring a little bit more green into the necklace. Set these other charms away. Um, I picked out two pearls, two spacers, two crystals, and then two other crystals in green. So I'm gonna wire wrap those and make little charms. The crystal, or I'm sorry, the pearls, I'm gonna put the daisy spacers on top. I'm just gonna grab a thin pair of wire, or I'm sorry, a thin pair of needle nose pliers. I'm sorry, round nose pliers, excuse me. And I'm gonna wire wrap this really quickly. It doesn't have to be super pretty because you're not gonna see it too much. Um, we're just gonna bring, bring that back around. And, well, I really meant it when I said not super pretty. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, okay, there we go. Straighten it a little bit. Hold that with my pliers. And if your fingers aren't strong enough to wire wrap like this, um, sometimes mine aren't, you can definitely use pliers to guide your wire. 
going to snip as close to that as I can so I don't have to tuck in anything. And then I'm going to repeat that for all of these beads. Okay, so I made my little charms and then I have some for the other side as well. And then um, I'm going to use the smallest of the three sizes of jump rings that I have. I forgot I need to grab two more for my little char uh, shell charms. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the first bead, which will be the green cone. I'm gonna put this back in screen here. I'm gonna grab a green cone and our first jump ring. We're gonna twist our jump ring open. I'm gonna slip on a green cone. And then I'm going to slip on all four of these strands onto my jump ring. I'm trying to grow a third hand so I can keep everything together. Let's try that again. Okay, we'll slip on our strands and then our cone. And then we'll slide close that jump ring. I'm going to slide that all the way up against our knot here. Pull the cone towards the outside of the necklace if we can. And then I'm going to make an overhand knot. And then I'm going to slide this knot as far as far down as I can, making sure we can kind of get our cone towards the outside and down towards our knot here. And you just want to loosen and tighten until you get it as close as you can. There we go. So now we have a charm floating on the side. I'm going to go with my pearl next. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Open up my jump ring. Slip on my cord. Slip on my pearl. Twist our jump ring closed. And then I'm going to try and flip that pearl again to the outside. And then I'm going to do an overhand knot. And just get it as close as you can, right up next to that pearl. Okay, isn't that cute? I just love it. Okay, so then I'm going to get with um, my, I have two different colors of crystals here. So making sure that I have one for each side. So one blue, one purple for this side, one blue, one purple for the other side. So next I'm gonna go with my purple one. Again, it's just kind of repetition at this point. We're gonna go open our jump ring. Slip on our bead, or vice versa, put the cord on first, whichever works easiest for you. Seems like the cord going on before the bead is the easiest for me. There we go, close that up. And make sure you get a good um, tight close on that jump ring so no cord slips out, so your bead doesn't slip off. There we go. Slide it down towards the outside. Overhand knot. And then slide that down to secure our jump ring. OK. 
Okay. So there are our charms. Now I'm going to put on the seashell. Put our cord on first. Um, we may want to make sure that the seashell is pointing outward. So I don't want to let me think about this. I want it to go on like that so it can flip out. And then we are going to move that to the outside. Isn't that cute? I love it. My dog's making puppy snores and it's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Okay, so we have that up against our knot, and we're going to do another knot. Could make a really cute coordinating bracelet like this if you wanted to just keep making charms and knots. be super simple, too. Again, you want to try and get up as close to that jump ring as possible. There we go. So there's our little cha-cha part of our necklace. I am going to do that again with the rest of the pattern. So I'll do another crystal, then a um, pearl, then a crystal, and then I'm going to do it on the other side and I'll be back and we're going to finish off the rest of the necklace. Okay, so I have decided that this is going to be a really long necklace um, and I think the leading up to my clasp, I'm going to leave it natural like this. You could load this with beads, you could do whatever you'd like, but I think I'm going to like how um, soft this will be against my neck um, and then we'll have the the movement of the rest of the necklace so I'm gonna I measured how long I wanted it to be um, and then you'll end up having some leftover cord depending on how long you make your necklace but that better left over than not enough right and I'm just gonna cut all four strands together my snippers, you can use scissors, whatever you have. Um, and then I just have a generic ribbon end. Um, you can use a cord end, you can use wire. I've shown how to do that in a past video for Jesse James beads. I'm just going to grab my cord end um, and then you have to clamp these. They're, you, they kind of have a learning curve, but depends on how hard um, the metal is to clamp. So I'm just going to hold all four strands in there, get a grip on the ribbon end. I'm just gonna put my thumbnail right at the edge there. Make sure all four strands are in. Get a real good grip at the edge with your thumbnail. And then bend down one portion as tightly as you can around all four of those strands. And there are different types of ribbon ends too. So now we've gotta be very careful because this guy's kinda of popping out. And the second side, I always feel is like the hardest. There we go. Well, that one went much more easily <laughs> than the other side. So now that guy is not going anywhere. I just grabbed a regular toggle clasp from my um, from my stash, and then I'm just going to use my jump rings from just or from Beetleon to attach. Get this cord out of here. And then I'll show you some really nice shots of this necklace. I am so pleased with it. It looks like a mermaid and a, like a fishing net and just beautiful a seascape, I feel like. Um, so I'm going to take my toggle. I always put um, the bar on the right hand side of the necklace because I'm right handed. But I guess it doesn't matter as much with a toggle as it would with a lobster clasp and then close it and we'll do the other side okay and then I'll show you the necklace in just a moment. Um, I want to make a quick pair of earrings to match and we have several 
we can actually make several earrings pairs of earrings because look how many beads and charms we have left we have all of the mermaid tails left we have um, some crystals we have these faux gemstones um, but I'm gonna make oh we have these like mermaid tail bead caps um, I'm gonna make okay so for our earring we're gonna use this um, flat crystal cone or sorry flat crystal coin bead and um, we're gonna make a dangle and so for the first part of the dangle we're gonna use that flat crystal coin and then um, I pulled out this crystal rondel spacer from the coral queen mix just gonna load those two onto my head pin um, I'm gonna make a simple loop if you would like would like you can make a wrapped loop but for an earring that's not gonna get a lot of stress on it, I'm just gonna do a simple loop. Okay. And then I'm going to grab an eye pin and load on this beautiful pave bead. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like worth the price of admission, it's gorgeous. And then I'm gonna put on my uh, gold daisy spacer and then my cone bead and we end up with the, like almost like a narwhal looking charm there the, the unicorns of the sea right and then um, I'm just gonna make a cut do another simple loop careful and there is half of our earring and I'm just going to connect the two and then put them on an earring wire. And look at that, we have our pair of earrings that are super sparkly and absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I'll clean this up and I'll show you our necklace and our pair of earrings together. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, here is our necklace. So we started with our beautiful pendant. Isn't that just such a pretty pendant? And then um, we made we went up the necklace with our crystal, our pearls, our metal. Oh, we've got a floofy here. And then we did some beautiful knotting. Oh my gosh, this turned out so sparkly, so seaworthy. <laughs> and then we have our charms up at the top of the necklace, which actually will hang, be still hanging pretty low on the neck because um, we built in some extra length in the back and then here's our finished back of the necklace oh i just love it it's so sweet reminds me of the sea reminds me of mermaids i'm going to get in a little bit closer so you can see the details so pretty let me know what you think i know it was a long ride <laughs> and um you know, try your hand at knotting. If you haven't tried it before, it, you can try some easier knots. Try overhand knots and then work up to, um, I think they're called square knots. If they're not, I'm sorry, I don't re really know the names. Um, I've been doing these knots since I was a kid, so they kind of come second hand to me. Um, and I'm used to doing a whole necklace full, but I really wanted to um, showcase more beads this way by um, clustering them together. So. I'm super happy with that. Here's our pair of earrings next to our um, necklace. The cool thing is we still have tons of beads left from that mix. You can make three or four more pairs of earrings. I think that mix is so spectacular. You could probably make 10 pairs of earrings and still have beads left. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Jesse James Beads for having me back again. And um, I hope you catch me on my channel over at Turquoise Street on YouTube. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.